Hi, I'm Lauren. Welcome to my channel, and if you're returning, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the media's obsession with the ins and outs of Archwell and Harry and Meghan's business. So before I get into that, please be sure to like, subscribe, and as well, click the notification icon so you'll be alerted when we have new Sussex discussions uh, for all of you to enjoy. All right, so let's talk about this, about this seeming obsession with the ins and outs of the Archwell uh, business model. In fact, I want to take us back. The truth is that this obsession has been going on since the very beginning. When uh, Megan first dropped the together cookbook. I think it took a lot of people by surprise. For them to see how fast she works, how quickly she creates content, I think really surprised people who thought she would have a harder time or need more time to adjust to her new position. The truth is, and this might be the American in me, but America's ethos is really about hard work and self-determination. So we like to create things. I think creativity is at our core. It's why we export so much entertainment, so much media. Um, and when you don't come from that kind of culture, when you come from a more, just a, an, an older type of culture, a, a traditional culture, um, it can be a bit surprising to see the American work ethic because it comes across as potentially irreverent when in fact it's not at all irreverent, it's not at all a reflection of you, but is instead a reflection of the drive, the ambition, and these are all great things to have. When people see the drive and that ambition and they ascribe negative connotations to it, negative meaning to it, it's often a reflection of their own internal state, which is they are intimidated, they are surprised, they are caught off guard, and they don't understand. Maybe they don't understand what you're doing, or maybe they don't understand how to achieve what you achieve. And I think it's the latter that we see a lot with the media and with members of the public who comment on the ins and outs of what Harry and Meghan do with their various charitable exploits. Um, let's look at the time while Harry and Meghan were still in the UK as working royals. They're royals still, but working royals, senior working royals. There was a fuss during that um, Australia Fiji tour, a discussion around that time of members of staff leaving and approaching and going and showing up for work and then quitting all these days later. And it was in many ways, I believe, um, not an honest take on the actual working dynamics for Harry and Meghan. Because the truth is this, the job is a hectic job. And when you work in media and security for high profile figures, there is so much demand on your time that those are high burnout professions. You can be in those positions for a while, but if you're not, you know, massively compensated, which would be something controlled by the royal family, not by Harry and Meghan specifically. And when you are dealing with things like security for people who are at high risk um, due to whatever, you know, reason, we know the reason, but we'll leave that aside. It can become an overwhelming thing if you've never seen anything like that before. And so a lot of that attrition, that loss of personnel, was partially due to them being overwhelmed by the gravity of love people had for Megan and not expecting for crowds to show up for her the way they did, not expecting um, for there to be the number of threats potentially that they receive. But that discussion was also to some extent disingenuous because, as we know, there were members of um, that working, that office, um, Harry and Meghan's office, who were already preordained to have a finite time for their contract. You know, there were members who were supposed to leave prior to Harry and Meghan's marriage and Meghan's arrival into the fold. They decided to contract on for a few more months to ease the transition, and then at the end of those few months, they would move on to you know, whatever else, whatever new adventure they had. So some of that attrition we saw was also due to just legal stuff that was totally normal and everyone within the institution expected. But it was discussed in media as though Megan had done something wrong, as though she had pushed people out, as though she had scared people away. When when you look at the situation, what we're seeing is staff who didn't expect to 
have the amount of focus on them that Megan brought, being a spotlight, being as charismatic as she is. They didn't expect it. They were underprepared. How would Megan, coming in from the outside, prepare them, people already inside, for a job they know how to do? That is not Megan's position, nor could she be at fault if they were not ready. That is something that they chose. Now, when we look at later on, and we see post Montecito move, Archwell has been established, there is a strong desire by members of the press to pick apart all of the ins and outs relating to people who are hired, new staff at Archwell, this and that. And all of that, of course, is tied to the bullying campaign, this, the stalking or alleged stalking, but I think it was kind of, you know, court cases were had. But all of that was kind of mixed into this constant misinformation around the Sussexes. But when we look at the way they talk about the go comings and goings, what it explains or what you start to see is that there is a willful ignorance, a willful ignorance toward the way that media works and the natural process of production and pre-production for anyone working in the entertainment industry. So before I get into that detail, I'm going to give a little bit of background. When you are trying to get a movie made, one of the things that they say um, is basically any movie that gets made is kind of a mini miracle because so many moving parts have to come together successfully for it to even be made, let alone be good, right? I'm just talking about an average thing. If it's a movie or a series or if it's, you know, a really high production, high quality podcast with a lot of really well-known in-demand guests, all of these wonderful things have to come together and it takes time. Not just time because, you know, you've got to schedule the arrival of people, but it takes time because you have to have the right production talent, the right administrative talent. These are the people who work behind the scenes, the right crew. These are the people who work behind the scenes, the right audio, behind the scenes. All of these people need to be not only good at their job, but they need to understand the vision, what is meant to be um, put up, what the production or the show is. And then they have to understand not only what that vision is, but how to execute it. And in the process of creating, you have agreements, disagreements. Someone thinks, you know, it'd be more effective if we shoot everything in black and white. And someone thinks, well, it'd be more effective if we shoot everything in day to night filter, which is basically a filter that makes everything look blue, right? And then there's someone who says, no, it needs to be in full color because people need to see what's going on and have no issues understanding what's on screen. These are all things that are really normal parts of a process. You'll see things like, you know, James Cameron's Avatar movies take 10 years to be made. Christopher Nolan will work on something like Inception or Tenet for 10 years before you ever see it on the screen. And in that process, there's writing and rewriting. There's discussions about how we shoot things. Then there's discussions about things like, you know, scheduling. Can we get this person for this time? Because sometimes you might book an actor or you might schedule a guest and they're available for a certain time, but then they have to drop out because life happens. We see an example with that, of that with, um, with Princess Meghan when she was scheduled to do a late night appearance, but then the queen passed and she had to go to the funeral. So that meant the schedule had to change. That sort of thing happens all the time in media and members of the press are being very disingenuous and they're misleading the populace and it's unfair to the reader, it's unfair to the viewer, it's unfair to the non-media person who is watching and reading and absorbing that content because all they're hearing and seeing is they can't keep a staff member, they can't, you know, find a direction for their you know, podcast or their show, when it couldn't be further from the truth. This is the norm. When you look at Megan's career as an actor, she had more than one pilot. Pilots failed. Pilots are first episodes that are used to pitch um, a show to a network and they decide to pick it up and keep filming more episodes. So basically it's like a TV show and a pitch at the same time. Megan had multiples of those and not all of them went to air. Not all of them were picked up. And she had, in fact, a pilot with the per Patrick Adams prior to suits that didn't get picked up and then they both got suits. This is a normal part of the process and we see the media using 
this tactic. We see it in the way they talked about Archwell before it aired. They said, oh, look, they signed a contract in 2020 for all this money with Spotify and there's nothing and they keep losing staff and they keep this. Now, look, Spotify has to prop the show up via, um, you know, hiring this, that and the other. And they made it sound as if Spotify didn't understand what it agreed to when it signed that contract with Archwell for a podcast. Spotify allegedly knows that Harry and Meghan don't carry a production studio in their back seat, you know, of their car or something like that. Harry and Meghan are going to need infrastructure to deliver the content that they want for their viewers. And if I'm Spotify, I am willing to rent studio space, book a location, set up a, a, an independent um, umbrella where that team can talk to the Archwell team and they can plan things and, and basically have uh, carte blanche to figure out exactly how they're going to get the show made. If I'm Spotify, that's worth like $80 million easy because the ratings and the advertising dollars are really what media is about. There's a reason soap operas are called soap operas. They were used to sell soap to the women watching them. It's all about the attention to get the eyeballs so they can sell advertising. And I say that because I want you to understand that when it comes to media, the people who have the money, the studios, the producers, the people who have the money want the advertising dollars and they understand that they're going to have to spend on content. They're going to have to spend money and they're also going to have to spend time and manpower on content so they can produce that. And then they sell that content viewership. So the people, you, me, all of us watching, they sell our attention to the advertisers who've got billions of dollars to spend to say, okay, I want to sell my ice cream or my, you know, backpacks, you know, in a 30 second spot in the middle of this podcast. If you're Spotify, that deal makes total sense. You spend $80 million to make $2 billion. And what the media is doing is misleading the public and getting all of us to believe that there is some kind of, you know, misappropriation of funds and mishandling of resources on the part of Harry and Meghan because things don't come out when we think they should. The truth is no timeline in media ever stays. It's like renovating um, a, a house or trying to redecorate a bedroom. You think you'll be done in a weekend and it takes you two weeks or a year or a month or what have you. The timeline will never be exactly what it is because incidents come up. That is normal. That is natural. And I want all of us to understand that this media narrative that Harry and Meghan are doing too much or not enough and they're mishandling whatever is going on, that is not an accurate depiction of what it takes to successfully create content when you are at their level of sophistication, exposure, and resource. What we see is the truth as it relates to Archwell is that podcast debuted number one in multiple countries around the world. Spotify is happy with that. That is a good deal. We need to remember, we have to follow the money. Those people who are writing those articles complaining about Harry and Meghan saying they're not doing this right, they're not doing that right. What are they also doing? They're selling your rage. They're selling your eyeballs being mad. Oh, you know, they, how dare they? They get all this stuff. They know that we look on and we say, if you have all of these resources, why aren't you using it this way? We don't know the ins and outs. They know they can tell us the wrong thing and get us in the wrong direction. So they are selling our rage. They're selling the comments we leave saying they should have done better. They're selling that to whom? The billion dollar advertisers who are going to sell you soap, who are going to sell you ice cream, who are going to sell you chips. All of those ads you see on those articles, all of those ads you see in between the commercial breaks when you're watching daytime news or evening news, all of those, that is what they're really selling and they're selling it to businesses, advertisers. They're not selling to you guys. All they're doing is saying, I want to give you enough anger that you keep coming back so that I can tell them, hey, look, I can guarantee 200 people because they're mad because they don't understand media. Don't give them what they want. 
Don't give them the satisfaction of your rage. Don't give them belief in their misinformation. The joy they have in your ignorance is the dollar sign they see when they sell it to the highest advertising bidder. Harry and Meghan are doing a great job. They are managing a media company with success. The fact that it's a nonprofit business also should be encouraging because they're not running at this with the same money motives. All right, so I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to um, say thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Information for my Patreon is in the description box below. Your support helps me to maintain my equipment and to uh, keep these uh, editing softwares up to date. So thank you all for that. And this is Lauren from me to you. I say I will see you in the next one.